Marhaba. Excellent. All right, good afternoon. Um, you were seeing that very early this morning. We issued a statement from the Secretary General on the um, situation in the Black Sea, in which the Secretary General said he is greatly concerned over the November 25th incident in near the Crimean Peninsula in the Black Sea at the approach of the Kerch Strait and involving Ukrainian and Russian vessels. He underlines the immediate need to avoid any risk of further escalation of the situation. The Secretary General urges both parties to exercise maximum restraint and to take steps without delay to contain this incident and reduce tensions through all available peaceful means in accordance with the Charter of the United Nations. He underscores the need to fully respect the rights and obligations of all concerned parties under relevant international instruments, the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine with its internationally recognized borders in accordance with relevant Secu General Assembly and Security Council resolutions must also be fully respected. And this morning he spoke at a high-level event on the multi-partner Human Security Trust Fund for the Aral Sea region. The Secretary General recalled his visit last June where he saw himself the, dr for the drying of the Aral Sea, which he recalls is one of the largest ecological catastrophes of our time. But he said he also witnessed enormous local resilience and a yearning to look ahead, adding that he is heartened that governments and the UN system are poised to help write a new chapter for the communities in the region. The Secretary General also spoke earlier at the high-level special event on cooperation between the UN and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. He called the organization a leading player in regional diplomacy, representing the largest combined population of any regional grouping in the world with more than 3 billion women and men. And this afternoon, the Secretary General uh, will speak at a close plenary meeting of the General Assembly to brief the membership on the status of, his, uh, of the reforms of the United Nations. The UN Environment Program today released its Emissions Gaps Report, which assesses the gap between anticipated emission levels in 2030 compared to the levels consistent with a 2 degree, 1.5 degree Celsius target. The report warns that the current pace of international action is insufficient to meet the Paris targets and concluded that nations must triple their efforts to meet the 2 degree centigrade target and increase their ambitious fivefold to meet the 1.5 degrees Celsius target. The report added that if the emissions gap is not closed by 2030, it is extremely unlikely that two degrees temperature goal can be reached. The report is online and also the World Meteorological Organization today said there is a 75 to 80 percent chance of an El Nino event developing by February next year. The last El Nino took place in 2016 and was linked to droughts, flooding, coral bleaching in different parts of the world. WMO said that while the upcoming event is not expected to be as powerful as the previous one, it can still significantly affect rainfall temperature patterns with important consequences to agriculture and food security, as well as water resources. Um, WMO said the El Nino could also combine with long-term climate change to boost the 2019 global temperatures. More information online. And our friend Stefan Di Mistura, the special envoy for Syria, in consultation with the Secretary General, has accepted an invitation to participate in the high-level meeting in Astana on the 28th and 29th of November. He will chair a meeting with senior representatives of Iran, Russia, and Turkey in their capacity as the conveners of the Sochi meeting of 2018. This meeting will seek to accelerate a concrete outcome on the establishment of a constitutional committee. The presence of the Special Envoy in Astana will be in a spirit of not leaving any stone unturned and maximizing the chances of upholding the Istanbul Joint Statement. Mr. Di Mistura has offered clear proposals and a full range of creative ways forward. He strongly appealed, uh, strongly appealed to the three countries to do what needs to be done now to support the UN-facilitated political process. He will report on these consultations to the Secretary General and the Security Council in due course. And on Yemen, the World Food Program completed distributing food to all residents in Hodeida City, reaching approximately 30,000 families to some 200,000 people. Humanitarian partners have also prepositioned enough supplies inside the city to support the population for two months. Since June, a vast majority of the 130,000 households displaced 
by conflict in Hodeida have received assistance, including emergency food aid, water and sanitation, shelter and non-food items. Our humanitarian colleagues tell us the report in Hodeida remains open and operational. And WHO and UNICEF are also supporting a three-day polio vaccination campaign, which aims to reach nearly 700,000 children under the age of five in Haja, Mahuit, and Raima governorates. And on the Central African Republic, uh, colleagues of the peacekeeping mission on the ground there deployed uh, peacekeepers yesterday along the EP Bambari axis in Waka Prefecture in response to reports of clashes between uh, Unité pour la Paix in Centrafrique, UPC, and anti-Balaka uh, members. The mission also reports that its uh, joint task force has intensified patrolling in the city's third district uh, in Bangui following clashes yesterday between three different criminal gangs. And to the country's west, in one prefecture, peacekeepers prevented the lynching of two combatants of the Revolution and Justice group after they clashed with members of a local self-defense group in Bondoro Kota, leaving two members of that uh, Revolution and Justice group dead. And an update on the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Our peacekeeping mission there, MONUSCO, reports that the situation remains tense in the Beni area of North Kivu as the joint operation by the mission, the Congolese Army against ADF, continues. In addition to these operations, peacekeepers continue to provide escorts to health workers in charge of the Ebola response. For her part, the special representative of the Secretary General, Leila Zarugi, was in, is in Beni. She was in Beni today to pay tribute to the peacekeepers who were killed earlier this month. She also visited the wounded and reiterated her support to all troops based in that part of the country. She met with the Malawan peacekeeper who was recovered over the weekend. He had been missing since November 14th following the launch of the joint operation. The mission continues to undertake efforts to recover the remaining three peacekeepers from Malawi who are still missing. And as world leaders converge in Geneva for a two-day conference on Afghanistan, UNICEF says that in 2019 will mark 40 years of conflict in that country, with four decades having left a terrible impact on the country's children. The agency said in 2018, there has been especially challenging due to spike in violence, unprecedented levels of drought, insecurity, and increased poverty taking a disproportionate toll on children. UNICEF said that some 5,000 children have been killed or maimed in the first three quarters of 2018 compared to all of 2017. Um, and the Secretary General will have a message to the conference tomorrow where he be represented by the Under Secretary General for Political Affairs, Rosemary DiCarlo. Uh, the UN Refugee Agency, meanwhile, said today over the weekend that it began its first airlifts of Western Afghanistan to bring thousands of tents to people uprooted by both conflict and ongoing drought. And WFP reports that together with UNICEF, they have launched a major program to improve the delivery of quality nutrition services in northeastern Uganda. The program will support more than 100,000 malnourished children under the age of five with supplementary feeding, as well as nearly 15,000 severely malnourished children with specialized treatment in hospitals and health centers in Uganda's northeastern Karamoja region. More information online. And just to flag a couple of upcoming events, the Committee on the Exercise of the Inalienable Rights of the Palestinian People will hold a special meeting tomorrow in observance of the International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian People. That's at 10 a.m. in the Trusteeship Council. Uh, and the Secretary General and the President of the General Assembly will be among the speakers. Um, and if you're looking for something to do this Saturday on the 1st of December at 3 p.m. in the Dimena Performing Arts Center, the UN Chamber Music uh, of the UN Staff Recreation Council will perform a concert for children. I'm not done. I didn't say halas. Um, and at uh, 2.30 p.m. in this room, there will be a press briefing by Sodik Safwev, the first deputy chairman of the state of Uzbe Senate of Uzbekistan. He will brief reporters on the high level, that, that means you, uh, the high level event to launch the multi-partner human security trust fund for the Aral Sea region. And of course, my guest will be in a few minutes after we are done, it will be Louise Arbor, who will be here to brief you on the road to Marrakesh. Mr. Klein. Yes. Uh, can you tell us why it took nearly 48 hours for the Secretary General to issue his statement about the uh, maritime confrontation uh, in and around, around 
uh, Crimea, and why, uh, why there wasn't a specific statement as to the importance of freedom of passage, particularly through that strait, which was the only um, passageway that uh, Ukraine was able to use to connect with the two ports in Ukraine it was trying to reach. I, I know he made some general statements about recognizing the sovereignty and ter territorial integrity of Ukraine, but this was really dealing with a specific fundamental international law principle about freedom of the seas. I would, uh, I don't know about you, but I, I noticed Rosemary DiCarlo speak at 11 a.m. in the Security Council in an open meeting. She represented uh, the views of the Secretariat and the Secretary General, um, and I think uh, we were prompt in uh, commenting and reacting uh, to this situation, which is a great concern to the Secretary General. And I would refer you to her uh, detailed, uh, her detailed briefing. No, I was present at that, but, but uh, you know, the event occurred on Sunday and there was nothing intervening from the Secretariat at all, let alone the Secretary General on what could have been and may still be a major flare-up of this conflict. No, no one is questioning uh, the, uh, uh, the risks involved in this uh, in this situation. Uh, we were obviously trying to gather uh, information uh, over the weekend. Once the event, uh, the the first media events uh, took place, and Ms. DiCarlo, I think, briefed uh, in detail, representing the Secretary General's opinion. Uh, yes, Stefan. Mr. Klein just said that. Uh, it was a period of time of 48 hours for the conflict that could have been a major conflict after the Cold War or so, and it's still with that potential, Some one would say. Uh, to whom the Secretary General counts, since he expressed his great concern on the issue, uh, to talk about this, and will he reach some of the involved and probably talk to Moscow or Kiev? Contacts have been had at various levels, and I think the Secretary General relies on the parties themselves to exercise the maximum amount of restraint. Mr. Abadi. Thank you, Stefan. Still on the same subject of the Crimean region, I've seen the statement of the spokesman of Secretary General. Does the Secretary General consider that the situation may pose a threat to regional peace and security? I think the Secretary General is very concerned about... Uh, about the ongoing uh, the situation, and as he said in the, as I said in the statement, he is concerned about the risk of escalation. Madam, Stefan, um, the United Nations on Monday announced nine point two million dollars mm -hmm. in health and malnutrition funds uh, for the crisis in Venezuela. Um, can you tell us a, a little bit more about what? that is and um, what's the process of giving it to Venezuela and what it will mean uh, those funds right. so the 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 money uh, is not uh, a transfer of money from the United Nations to Venezuela it is a transfer of money from the surf uh, to various uh, UN agencies to complement the ongoing activities that have already been agreed to with the government of Venezuela for projects directly implemented uh, by UN agencies, uh, and this address you know critical health, and nutrition, uh, and other needs in the country. Will this mean that Venezuela is accepting that they have a humanitarian crisis, or is just what you mentioned just a process that has been already agreed to, and it doesn't? It, it's things that have already been agreed to, and it's really uh, to address critical, uh, critical life-saving needs. Uh, I think it's. Part of that money, uh, as I, I mentioned, I think I flagged yesterday, two days ago, uh, some deliveries uh, by UNICEF. Uh, part of that money is going to UNICEF. UNICEF has been delivering some uh, critical aid for some, uh, some months, but again, this is focused on life-saving uh, critical needs. Yes, sir. Thank you, Stefan. Um, in December 30, they have election in uh, Bangladesh. As two people run for that, Prime Minister Sheikha Hasina and Reform Prime Minister Khalid Zia. What's the UN get involved with this? That's the first question. Second question, how are they going to make it fail election with that? Well, the, I'm not, uh, I, I can check if we are involved in any way, uh, either technically, I mean, I, 
technically or otherwise in the elections. I'm not aware that we are, but I can check. And obviously, we always would support the holding of free and fair elections. Abdel Hamid, then Masoud. Thank you, Thank you Stefan. First, I wish uh, that you continued with your announcement about the International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people about the art ex or photo exhibit on Thursday. It's not only tomorrow, but also on Thursday, there is more activities on that day, which falls on Thursday. Um, the, my question is about, uh, the WFP today said that 50% of the shipment of food to Yemen has been cut uh, due to many ships are refusing to go to Yemen to dock in Hodeida uh, port due to the escalation of the fighting. Mm -hmm. In fact, after Mr. Griffiths left Yemen, the fighting had no, escalated. I, I hear. What, what is uh, the so, question, so, sir? I mean, the statement you read, it sounds like everything is going fine in Yemen. I, I don't think anything I've ever said here should be interpreted as but everything I mean, is going fine in, in Yemen. Uh, the, down the shipping companies, the, yeah. the issue is that the shipping companies appear to be reluctant to, to dock at, uh, at Hodeida. Obviously, uh, shipping companies have commercial interests. They see yep. the insecurity in the port. It doesn't lend itself to increased uh, activity. Uh, over the last two weeks, uh, the, um, the activity has been cut by, by half. Yep. If this continues, it will have a drastic uh, and immediate impact, uh, not only on WFP's availability to, to distribute food, uh, but also on prices in local markets. And, and one of the issues that you'll recall that we've been stressing is the economic slice of this, is the, is, is the shooting up of prices and the lack of cash available in the economy. Uh, this, as if we needed another reminder, is why we need a halt in the fighting and exactly. why we need uh, for, for parties to rally around uh, Mr. Griffiths and his efforts. What, w, what I flagged is that WFP had already distributed, uh, it was distributing the food that was already in, uh, in hand. So do you think it's feasible now for the meeting in Sweden to take place? I, I the, think the first uh, any, of, of uh, any prediction uh, will be left uh, to you. We will announce things when things are firmed up. Masoud, then Evelyn. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pond. On this uh, situation in Palestine, Again, uh, following the arrest of the governor of Jerusalem, in the Palestinian governor of Jerusalem, has the situation, in your opinion, stabilized? Where is it? Is the tension growing much more? Uh, I mean, they can't be much more than what they are already. So I mean, the, the overall situation, I think, is uh, I would refer you back to to Mr. Bladnov's last briefing, but obviously is, is one of, of continuing concern. So uh, my other, other question I wanted to ask you was the Secretary General, as you said, is going to uh, give a closed door speech on this uh, reform of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. Will the reform of the Security Council also be part no, of this? The reform of the Security Council is beyond the limited domain of even the Secretary General. <laughs> Evelyn. Right. Uh, can you bring But us I would add that it's something that he's always, that he and his predecessors have often called for. Can you bring us up to date on Yemen if there's any fighting? And secondly, the United Nations, well, there are lots of people who keep saying the UN should do something about Dega. Does that mean control the port? Well, I think we've. And if uh, so, it would, take, it would take months, would it not? Uh, I think we have, uh, I think both Mr. Griffiths and others have talked about the potential of the UN uh, taking over the port. Uh, that's not something we are able to, uh, to announce uh, as of yet. The insecurity continues. I, I don't know what more I can, I can say on, on Yemen. Yes, Fatih. Thank you, Steph. Um, with regard to the Secretary General uh, participation at the G20 summit in uh, Buenos Aires, is there any plans by the SG to uh, have any meetings with uh, President Erdogan of Turkey and the Saudi Crown Prince? And if uh, the second part, uh, did Turkey submit a formal request to the Secretary General to conduct an international uh, investigation? We expect to have an announcement hopefully tomorrow on, uh, on the G20. Two quick questions that I want to go to our guest who's been waiting patiently in the green room, and I'm sure he's eager to come out here. Mr. Abadi. Thank you, Stefan. On the question of reforms, the Secretary General has been uh, speaking about them before the General Assembly before. 
What is new? Why is he going now to the General this, Assembly? The reform is a partnership between the Secretary General and the sec Secretary and the member states. He's updating them and will spend, uh, I expect, about two hours answering questions. Uh, and he's uh, very engaged and willing and happy to do that. Habibi. Okay. Last question. Don't ever say that. I say that. You don't okay. say that. Go ahead. On East Jerusalem, uh, Stefan, I don't know if uh, Mr. Mladinov is aware of the campaign that Israel now is conducting to arrest activists in East Jerusalem. 400 people had been arrested in the last few days or a few, two weeks, uh, mem include member of the sec mm -hmm. Palestinian security and member of Fatah mm -hmm. activists. So in, in a campaign to empty the uh, city, East Jerusalem, from its Palestinian residents. Is, the, is Mr. Mladinov aware of this recent uh, campaign? Um, sure, I will check with his office. I haven't received anything today. Thank you. Okay, thank you.